my dear students this is deepak kumar and today i shall be discussing with you the second part of the chapter the making of a scientist that is uh, written by yes robert w peterson that is written by robert w peterson and uh, this chapter has been taken from the supplementary reader in english for class 10th footprints without feet right i request all of all of you if you have not listened to the first part first lecture please go through edu next app and click on the link that is shared in that app in the chapter uh, the making of a scientist okay dear so uh, let's start page number 35 of ncert book then in the 7th grade he got a hint of what real science is when he entered a country co- country science fair and lost it was really a sad feeling to sit there and not get anything while everything everybody else had won something a bright said his entry was slides of frog uh, tissues which he showed under a microscope he realized the winners had tried to do real experiments not simply make a neat display so if you are uh, presenting on any uh, debate if you are presenting the slide show then neat presentation may give you may fetch you a award but when you are in any uh, competition that is based on real showing real experiments there if you will show only neat display of your slides there you will not get any kind of prize and that's ha- that happened to richard abright as well already the competitive spirit that drives already the competitive spirit that drives richard abright was appearing i knew that for the next year's fair i would have to do a real experiment he said the subject i knew most about was the insect work i would, had been doing in the past several years so he wrote to dr arkhart for ideas and back came a stack of suggestions for experiments those kept a bright busy all through high school and led to prize projects in country and international science fairs for his eighth grade project a bright tried to find the cause of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years a bright thought the disease might be carried by a beetle he tried raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles i didn't get any real results he said but i went ahead and showed that i had tried the experiment this time i won so see how he learned from his failures my dear we not always learn from our success we le- we do learn lots of things from our failures right and something happened uh, in a, a, in a bright's life a bright's life the next year his science fair project was testing the theory that viceroy butterflies copy monarchs the theory was that viceroys look like monarchs because monarchs don't taste good to birds viceroys on the other hand to t- do taste good to birds so the more they like they look like monarchs the less likely they are to become a bird dinner a bird dinner a bright's project was to see whether in fact birds would eat monarchs he found that a startling would uh, would not eat ordinary b- bird food it would eat all the monarchs it could get a bright said later research by other people showed that viceroys probably do copy the monarch this project was placed first in the geology division and third overall in the country science fair uh, my dear there is a picture you can see how is the monarch butterfly top different from the vice ray butterfly bottom so top and bottom you can find out right please turn the page dear page number 36 in his second year in high school richard abright began the research that led to his discovery of an unknown insect hormone indirectly it also led to his new theory on the life of cells and you know my dear students cell a cell is a structural and functional unit of life the question he tried to answer was simple what is the purpose of the 12 tiny gold spots on a monarch pupa see my dear students whenever we see a butterfly and its golden spots we understand that that the, the nature has given it the uh, god has given to given these spots to it only for to beautify its uh, look only to look it attractive everyone assumed the spots were just ornamental a bright said but dr arkhart didn't believe it to find the answer 
a bright and another excellent science student first had to build a device that showed that the spots were producing a hormone necessary for the butterfly's full development so the hormone was not ornamental my dear students it was and they tried to prove that the 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 spots that given that are on the body the golden spots uh, that were producing and uh, those spots were producing a hormone that is very essential for the butterfly's full development right so both started working in that this project won a bright first place in the county fair and entry into the international science and engineering fair there he won third place for geology he also got a chance to work during the summer at the entomology laboratory of the walter reed army institute of research as a high school junior richard abright continued his advanced experiments on the monarch pupa that year his project won first place at the international science fair and gave him another chance to work in the army laboratory during the summer you can easily understand my dear when he lost when he once lost his entry was slides of frog tissues which he showed under a microscope and he realized the winners had tried to do real experiments not simply make a neat display and he remembered that he learned that right dear uh, in his senior year he went a step further he grew cells from a monarch's wing in a culture and showed that the cells would divide and develop into a normal butterfly wing scales only if they were fed the hormone from the gold spots that project won first place for geology for at the international fair he spent the summer after graduation doing further work at the army laboratory and at the laboratory of the us department of agriculture the following summer after his freshman year at harvard university a bright went back to the laboratory of the department of agriculture and did more work on the hormone from the gold spots using the laboratory's sophisticated instruments he was able to identify the hormone's chemical structure a year and a half later during his junior year a bright got the idea for his new theory about cell life it came while he was looking at x-ray photos of the chemical structure of a hormone when he saw those photos a bright didn't shout eureka or even i have got it but he believed that along with his findings about insect hormones the photos gave him the answer to one of the biology one of biology's puzzles how the cell can read the blueprint of its dna dna you know deoxyribonucleic acid dna is the substance in the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity the characters that you inherit from your parents if you want to know more information about dna and uh, about heredity and evolution please contact your biology teacher he will explain that or search about it in internet on internet right it determines the form and function of the cell thus dna is the blueprint for life okay dear students dna how dna is the blueprint of blueprint of life because it determines the form and function of a cell thus dna is the blueprint or uh, blueprint for life okay dear next page a bright and his college roommate james r wrong worked all that night drawing pictures and constructing plastic models of molecules to show how it could happen together they later wrote the paper that explained the theory surprising no one who knew him Richard Abright graduated from Harvard with highest honors second in his class of 1510 Abright went on to become a graduate student researcher at Harvard Medical School there he began doing experiments to be, to test his theory if the theory proves correct it will be a big step towards understanding the processes of life it might ha- also lead to new ideas for preventing some types of cancer and other diseases all of this is possible because of a bright scientific curiosity see all this happened because of his scientific curiosity my dear students your curiosity will help you a lot to augment your skills to strengthen your knowledge in almost all the areas of life so generate curiosity in you and in unesco's millennium development good development goals it also talks about developing curiosity and developing scientific temper among school going children right his high school research into the purpose of the spots on a monarch pupa eventually led him led him to his theory about cell life richard bright has been interested in science since he first began collecting butterflies but not so deeply that he hasn't time for other interests 
Bright also became a champion debater and public speaker and a good canoeist and all-round outdoor, outdoors person. He is also an expert photographer, particularly of nature and scientific exhibits. See, my dear, if you are a very good student, it doesn't mean that you should always involve in, in studying, reading books, going through textbooks and all that. Not at all. In spite of being a very good student, you can pursue your interest, you can whatever you like. For example, if you uh, are a very good student, go through the textbooks. That is very good. Read this, that is not in the, your syllabus or maybe in the syllabus. You read all those contents. But at the same time, you pursue your interest as well. You pursue your interest as well. Right. If you want to be a, uh, if you uh, uh, feel like running, being an athlete or being a bodybuilder, do that. Apart from uh, being an avid reader. In high school, Richard Bright was a straight A student. Because learning was easy, he turned a lot of his energy towards the debating and model United Nations clubs. He also found someone to admire, Richard A. Weherer, his social science teacher and advisor to both clubs. Mr. Weherer was the perfect person for me then. He opened my mind to new ideas, a bright said. See, he is showing his gratitude towards his teacher, who opened his mind to new ideas. Richard would always give that extra effort, Mr. Weherer said. What pleased me was, here was this person who put in three or four hours at night doing debate research besides doing all his research with butterflies and his other interests. Richard was competitive, Mr. Weherer continued, but not in a bad sense. He explained Richard wasn't interested in winning for the winning sake or winning to get a prize. Rather, he was winning because he wanted to do the best job he could. For the right reasons, he wants to be the best. My dear, in this, at the present juncture, we all are busy in, in cutthroat competition, right? The main thing is that we need, to stay, we need to stay positive in our pursuit, in our endeavor, and we need to learn even from our defeats, as Richard Bright learned from his defeats, in the same way we need to learn from our defeats as well as from our success as well. Right, dear? That will be a new approach towards leading a comfortable and a meaningful life. And that is one of the ingredients in the making of a scientist. Start with a first-rate mind. This para is very, very important, my dear students. Start with a first-rate mind, add curiosity, and mix in the will to win for the right reasons. I repeat, for being uh, uh, ingredients in the making of a scientist, start with a first-rate mind, add curiosity, and mix in the will to win for the right reasons. A bright was, has these qualities, and you know, my dear students, if you will have these qualities, you will definitely be a better person. From the time the book, The Travels of Monarch 10, opened the world of science to him, Richard Bright has never lost his scientific curiosity by Robert W. Peterson. My dear students, this concludes the chapter. I request all of you to go through the chapter and find out the question and answers as well as in-text questions as well and find out the meaning of difficult words. If you have any problem, you can contact me anytime. Okay, dear? Thank you.